Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today on Sip the Tally Films, we're going to take a look at the Baltimore Ravens run defense. The Pittsburgh Steelers were able to bully us in what normally is our best asset, run defense. I just want to take a few plays to show you what Najee Harris and the Pittsburgh Steelers did to the Baltimore Ravens. And then it posed a question to you at the end. Is Calais Campbell really that important, or did the Steelers just get that much better in three weeks? Run the intro. All right, let's take a look at, you know, some of the reasons why the Steelers were able to put up the Russian numbers that they did Sunday night. Starting with this first play. All right, so what it is, it, it looks like a bunch of guys on the line, but they kind of disguised it. So you got your 5-0 five, five lineman. Then you got these two tight ends offset to the side. Those two guys right there. And so with them running this, this jet sweep, going across in this motion here, you're really going to kind of split the O-line or split the formation, so to speak, because the two tight ends are going to run outside zone with that guy coming across to make it look like outside zone, which is going to take Houston and Williams out of the play. And then you're going to end up with basically man-on-man -man blocking. But the thing is, you know, you see where that split is right there. That's basically split the formation. Now you're sitting here on Kyle on a tackle, which is tough. And he's kind of getting manhandled. You got Odafi Owe, who's getting blocked out by the guard. And that's, that's great leverage for him because they're running the inside zone. You got um, Matabike, who's the next guy. Is in his gap, but not really in great leverage. He looks like he's kind of off balance. You got Roquan, who's been climbed to the, uh, the their O line and climbed to the second level to get Roquan. And you got, uh, I think this is Washington on the backside. The only person that's free in this thing is Queen, and that's because he's unblocked. But Queen has to worry about the boot from the quarterback first. So he can't just shoot that gap because he's got to worry about, about him booting out, and he got to you know, make sure that doesn't happen. So it really, they got five on five blocking, which is, from an offensive standpoint, that's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask for. Like I said, Queen's the extra guy. So now Najee's coming through there. Roquan's kind of getting railroaded by the guard. He makes a nice little cut. And he's off and running. And it's simple. They just were able to, they were able to get a hat on a hat on this play and then turn it into a, a, a big game. Let's keep going. This next play. They're backed up on like the five-yard line. And t pay attention to uh, JPP. That's the guy we're going to focus on. Because what... And when I did this clip, I didn't realize, but when I did later clips, I understand what they were trying to do. He basically wrong-shouldered this. And what I mean by that is he has this, this outside gap, but when this guy comes across to kind of it's, – it's split zone. So a guy's going to come across the back, of the back of the end zone and try to uh, block him off. And what I mean by that is, and I'll show you here, somebody's going to uh, – will it work? Going to come across and try to block JPP. That's what's going to attempt to happen. So everybody has that gap responsibility, especially after they shift. So your Bowser got this outside gap. Uh, Victor, I think his name, got that gap. Roquan's hitting there. And these two could, could alternate. They could be either or. It, this could be flipped back and forth. I don't really know. Queen has this one. Uh, Travis Jones has that one. And these two could alternate too also. But Urban has that. And JPP has the outside edge. So what's going to happen is when, this, when little baby Hayward, who's right here, comes across to, to block JPP, I'm thinking he should take it on with his inside shoulder, keep the outside shoulder free, force everything inside. But what he's going to do is he's going to take it on with his outside shoulder and force Najee to bounce, and no one's there to feel it. So what we're doing is trying to spill it. So it's, it's a lack of communication from somebody because if he takes that wrong shoulder and tries to spill it, somebody got to be over top. If he takes this, this left shoulder and boxes it in, then, you know, the run stays in the middle. So that's what you got on the edge. You got, you're going to either try to spill it or you can try to box it in. In this case, he tries to spill it, and there's no one to spill it to. Let's see. Let me back it up. Let's see, watch. See, I, I'm thinking he should have this shoulder on that shoulder, and that way he can box the stuff in. But he's trying to spill it, and there's no one there to spill it to. Why? And who should he be spilling it to? Who you ask? Your linebackers. But you're getting Queen getting blocked, getting blocked down by the guard. 
Roquan's getting blocked by, I think that's the center. There's no, where's the force player? There's no force player. Is Chuck the force player? Not from this side of the field. No. And so with him wrong shouldering it or spilling it and there's no one out there to spill it to, you get one cut and he gone. So was Marcus supposed to be the force player? Maybe. Maybe. Because look, look at him coming in the screen right there. Maybe he's supposed to come on downhill, but he got to protect the pass first. He's the free safety. Yeah, another gash. That was about 10 yards. See, that's the first down marker right there. He's going to this third play. And watch that guy. Just watch. That's the new acquisition. I think his last name is Victor. Now, what's going to happen is 69 and 65, is going. they're going to take their guy all the way to the level of the linebackers, which is going to prevent Queen from scraping over the top. Because, again, this is, split, this is split zone again. You see the guy coming across, and they're going to take their guy to the backer. That's going to prevent Queen from getting over the top. Queen should be scraping over the top of this, trying to get outside of it, but he can't because 65 and 69 have taken, uh, I think that's, let me see, who, who is that? That's 91 is Victor. And who's the edge guy beside Victor? Look like JPP. Is that JPP? I think it is. No, that's Chuck. That's what it is. That's Chuck Clark. That's why he got it there so easy. So Chuck Clark and 91 gets pushed all the way back to the levels of the, the linebackers. And the linebacker can't scrub over top. But you see, you see Roquan right there to fit that gap. But what's going to happen is Najee going to get it and instantly cut that thing right back. And he can't get over top. He just he just he just can't. Cause all the trash. And he was at good position. He didn't run up in the line of scrimmage. They just got blocked up on this level. And again, JPP trying to trying to spill it. He just didn't close that gap enough. JPP should be right off his butt trying to spill it. He should be right off 65 butt. But he left too much space and Najee big self fit through there. I don't know how. I don't know how his his big butt. So it got through there. And again, off to the races again. Now you got little, two little guys on the linebacker trying to tackle this behemoth. And they, they make business decisions. They get him down, but it's business decisions. Ooh, Queen jacked him up. Baby Haywood. Do it during the play, though. All right, let's go to our fourth play. We got five plays total. Five plays total. So you're going to get inside zone again. Simple inside zone. You see the blocking schemes. 65 is going to go out to Houston. You're going to get that double for Roquan. You're going to get this double to Pat Queen. He's going to block the backside. We're going to leave Chuck Clark free. Second level guy free. That was the reason they motioned the tight end in so they could leave the second level guy free. Or if it was an RPO, they could read that second level guy. And this is just regular inside zone, no split zone, just regular inside zone. It okay. Now it serves the same purpose because they put that tight end here to block the backside in. So even though they didn't have somebody play side and come back across, this serves the same purpose as split zone or blocking that guy. So it technically is not split zone, but it's it is split zone because of what the tight end is doing. Because normally if it's straight inside zone, the tight end will go with the flow and he work up the chuck and you you leave this guy unblocked. But because they basically run a split zone and don't want nobody to come off the edge, they brought the tight end in to block the backside guy. Now they'll leave Chuck unblocked. The less are the two evils unblocked. That's what they're doing. And you see, you see, you already see it forming. You see the, the two doubles by 61 and 69, the double by 78 and 76. And you can the running back is just gonna hit that natural crease. That natural crease that's behind uh 76. See, it's forming right there. Now, Chuck is the unblocked guy. He should make that tackle. He should make that tackle. He's the unblocked guy. And it got folded right to him. But look, look at all this blocking on the front side. Winning. This is like four yards down the field. Washington has his back turned to the play. Whoever this is, I can't I don't remember who was in the game, got his back turned to the play. 
I think this is Queen. He's covered up by 76. So, what are we doing? Did they get that much better in three weeks? Their O-line? Or is Calais Campbell just that big of a difference? Let's go our last play. You get split zone again. And you see the blocking. You see the blocking. Oh, I went too far, my bad. There it is right there. Now he's he's going to go out the old way. You're going to get this double to Roquan. You're going to get this double to Queen. And you're going to get the tight end to kick out. So it's the same play. And they're leaving Marcus unblocked this time. But this time, they're going to bring 13 across behind the line of scrimmage to block Marcus. So this is a receiver. This is Miles Borkins. Miles Borkins is going to come across to block Marcus Williams. I didn't realize Miles even played. Bam. That's that block. Now, Marlo, you, you open. You free. Go make the tackle. Go make the tackle, Marlo. And, and tr normally... With the, the way the way it was blocked, this would be a chance for Marlo to go in there and make the tackle. But it's one unforeseen thing that you you may be picking it up before I even get to it. Look at Irving right in the middle. Look at Brent Irving. Getting thrown out the club. And because Irving, Irving's getting thrown out the club, now Najee has enough uh, and, and he has options. He don't have to run out here straight to Marlo and try to run over him or fake him out because Marlo got a clear path to him. He can cut this thing inside behind some good blocking. Because this, this is a little arrow. I mean, not a little arrow. A little alley being created right there. Because Urban's getting thrown out the club. And with Urban being thrown out the club, they run into Roquan. So this, his, this guy really gets a two for one. Now he's just maneuvering his way through there to, you know, he up, he up in here with the little guys now. He can bully these cats. He up in here with the lid, guys. He can bully these cats. So with, with that being said, I, I really don't know. Put it in the comments what you think the difference was in the run defense last night. Was it did the Steelers get that much better? Is Calais Campbell that impactful? Um, is Urban and Victor not suited to be in there? Or, or what? What do you think happened to the run game last night? Put it in the comment section. Uh, if this is your first time here, and you like what you saw, please like the video. Likes are more important than food and water, according to Vodge. Uh, and if you really like it, subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified when these random videos drop. Um, I want to say thank you to all the people who super chatted yesterday throughout the live stream or the call-in show. Uh, those names should be circulating right here right now in the bottom of my screen-ish there somewhere right there. They should be scrolling up and down the screen right there. I just want to say thank you to you guys. I want to say thank you to all the members, all the Patreons, and everybody that hit the Super Chat, Cash App, PayPal um, yesterday or the day before. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. See you soon. Peace. With the, with the